Yeah, let's go. Uh, yeah, yeah. We came a long way. That's what the song say. And I could do all. It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Buccaneers and the Colts. And it's coming up next. First open back in 2008, there's a look at Lucas Oil Stadium here in downtown Indy. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here in Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Brandon Gardner alongside as always my partner Charles Davis and CD in the few moments here before kickoff let's give these folks at home a look at these two offenses by the numbers what, what stands out to you Brandon I just continue to be amazed by the analytics of the game and it's an area where I continue to concentrate and study because I'm still trying to figure out how coaches and coordinators can really crunch the numbers and find where exactly on the field the defense is vulnerable. It's the game within the game. And if you really dive into it, it can be endlessly fascinating. Here's the putter, Rigoberto Sanchez, on to get us started. And we are underway from Indianapolis. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And we get a peek at Tom Brady as he brings out this Tampa Bay offense. And Tom Brady in his 22nd season overall and his second in Tampa Bay. After two decades in New England, a change of scenery and another tremendous season culminating with a Super Bowl title. 40 touchdown pass in the regular season, and most since his record-shattering 50-touchdown season of 2007 in New England. He did have minor knee surgery in the offseason, but he said he's sticking with his plan to play beyond the age of 45, which is still two years from now. Look out, NFL. Tom Brady still wants to win. On first down, Brady. Going for Evans, but that pass is intercepted. Xavier Rhodes with a pick, and his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. The Indy offense making their way out, and it is Jacob Eason from Washington at quarterback. And what he's thinking about right now is first down, let's find a way to make a big play. Because when you get a sudden change situation, that defense has to rush onto the field unexpectedly. You might catch them having a defensive breakdown or not quite prepared. And it was really sudden after the first play picked off. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Throwing is Eason. This goes out right to Doyle. No gain there in the completion, second and 10. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You talk about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. 
So, Charles, first drive here, a little safe completion underneath. Maybe get some rhythm, get your feet wet, so to speak. I agree, and I like it because it's a lot like a basketball game when you're getting started and you pass the ball around so everyone touches it early and gets involved in the game. In this case, it's not just dumping it to a back and he's able to run with the ball, but you get your offensive linemen involved because they get to get out and run and hit people in the open field. Everyone getting their feet wet early. They lost two, and it brings up four. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this will remain a scoreless game. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. Now they were intercepted the first time they had the football, but now they get it back and it's still 0-0. And because of that, you know what the thought process is? Interception? What interception? It didn't really happen because they gave up no points. So go back on the attack. Go back and run the offense you believe will be successful. Find your playmakers and give them the football. All right, try the 50-yarder and miss it, and now this offense has it first and 10 at the 40. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Aaron, this one out for Evans. And this is dropped. Oh, boy. A chance for a big play early, but he could not secure it. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. you got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Here's second and ten. Brady now to throw. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Brady looking to throw on third and two. This one complete to Scott Miller. Touchdown, Tampa Bay! Scotty Miller, 52 yards. And the Bucs have taken a first quarter lead. I think it's fair to say there's nothing that gets a crowd to its feet quite like a big play, and that was something special there. Boy, was he moving. And I'll tell you what, what a bird's eye view I've got here because that was absolutely something else to watch. Not a lot of wiggle in that. That was catch it and go, and he used those wheels of his to absolute devastating effect. Extra point up and good by Suckup, and it's now a 7-0 game. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Bringing it out of his end zone, Isaiah Rodgers. And not a good return here at all as they'll be forced to start at the 12-yard line. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. 
They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Second down, another run with Taylor. And this is going to be a Colts first down as the tackle made at the 26-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. That's the type of run that Jonathan Taylor gives you so often, and you just can't take it for granted. He finds a way to get those extra yards. The third running back taken in the 2020 draft, but he had the best numbers by far of any of them. 1,169 yards, third most in the NFL, and by the last quarter of the season, he ranked among the best runners in the league. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Throwing on second and eight, Eason. Eason in trouble, and down he goes. Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. Nice play there by Shaq Barrett, and he was always going to be hard-pressed to match his 2019 output, where his 19 and a half sacks led the NFL. But still in 2020, he put eight on the board and remains a key cog in the Buccaneers' defense. Come on now. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. From the gun is Issa. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Almost feels like anything you can do, we're going to try and match or do better. We've already seen one touchdown pass from the opposition. They tried to equal it on that throw. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. Jadon Mickens deep for Tampa Bay. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Back now comes Tampa Bay, and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their own 42. Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Now a first carry from Giovanni Bernard. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Well, I would have figured after the nine-yard run on the previous play, getting one more yard wouldn't have been much of a problem. But apparently it was, and now it's third down. So that one will be accepted. Still third down. Still 
Delay of game penalty. Ships him back five yards, makes it third and ten. To throw, it's Brady. He'll drop this underneath for Jones. And he'll get this up near midfield, but that's still a few yards shy of the first down. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we got faith in our tackles. We'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Back deep for the Colts, Naheem Hines. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted, spotted at the 14-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Carry by Taylor to start the drive. And a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. Little power on the move that time, but still tackled shy of the 20. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. They go play action with Eason. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On the handoff, this is Taylor. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. Two yards the loss, second and 12. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. Second and 12. Single, single, single slot, single slot. Now Eason. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time. And that'll make it third down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Eason sets to throw it. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. This is caught inside the 15. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Quite a show of arm strength right there. That was in the air for a long time, and it was on target, too. And look, you're down 7 to nothing in the first quarter. You know it's not a time to panic or feel like you've got to get those points back right away. But how about their conviction and taking that chance to throw the ball deep right there, knowing they can hit on plays like this. I'll bet that won't be the last time we see him take a deep shot in this game. Naeem Hines, his first carry. 
This carry brought to an end at the eight. Good stick skills, but not much room to operate. Two yards that time, a stark contrast from the big chunk on the previous play. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two, and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight, now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a good three. Job, good job, Down on the field, we've That's got right. an injured Colt after that last play. We'll check on his status when we get back. Third and five. This will be the eighth play of the drive. Here's Eason to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Doyle. Touchdown, Colts. Jack Doyle. A five-yard touchdown. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying up this football game. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Point after here, coming up. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. To return is Jadon Mickens. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Let's go, boys. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Brady going to bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at their own 27. Working from the gun, it's Brady. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Brady gives this one off to Jones. Kari Willis there to bring him down. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now Brady. That is caught. It's Chris Godwin. And he'll be taken down. But first, he gets deep into Indianapolis territory. That one good for 37 yards. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just saw receivers find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air. Nice chunk of yardage there. And then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. On the ground, this is Leonard Fournette. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
When you're trying to create space for your running back, the first thought is how physical is the offensive line? Sometimes it's just positioning. On that play, it didn't matter about positioning or being physical. The defensive front, they out leveraged them and won the battle. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Brady going to throw. And he finds Gronk. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Partner took a while for him to lock onto a receiver, and he finally found his man coming left to right across the formation. But by the time he got the ball to him, not much of a chance to turn up field and make anything out of it. Seven seven, our score after one. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football. For the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Now Brady. And he's got Gronkowski yet again. And the Buccaneers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. I'd love to sit down at some point in our off season and talk to these defensive coordinators in the red zone Tight end is obviously a big threat, yet these guys continue to make plays. Is there any other way to stop them? Apparently not. In the red zone, like you said, that's your guy that got it to him. Supreme confidence in going to a playmaker. From the gun, it's Brady. Looking middle, it's caught by Gronkowski. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. Three yards the gain there, second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right, that run after catch. Second down and goal, Brady. And he's got his tight end, Howard. It's a Buccaneer touchdown. A five-yard touchdown catch, and the Bucs have taken the lead. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Extra point try now for Suckup. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. Here's Isaiah Rogers to return. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. And we take some time to spotlight T.Y. Hilton now. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well, and they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times, that's like the ticking time bomb. The longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches, though, so far in this game. Eason and the Colts now with a first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Eason. 
This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. 40 catches as a rookie for Michael Pittman. He overcame some early injury problems and really developed into a reliable target as the season went on. The son of a former running back, that's what he looks like after the catch. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Eason going to throw it out of the shotgun. And going right back to Pittman. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 18 more yards there and another first down. When the hitch route has run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. First and 10, Taylor now. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. And now this is Hilton on the receiving end. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. The Colts on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. They missed a field goal earlier, so possibly as a result, that's why they're going to try to go for it here on fourth down. They'll run for it. It's Mack, and I'm not sure he got there. Did they stop him? They did. He needed a yard. He didn't get anything. And the Buccaneers' defense holds, and they get the football back. Partner, when you see a running play stop short like that, you just know that the defensive front, they won the battle of leverage and created the push back into the opposing backfield. And for the offensive coordinator, whether you had one yard to go or 20 yards to go on fourth down, now you're probably saying, oh, maybe I should have passed it, right? Yeah, hindsight is always 20-20. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Now Brady. Airing this one out for Evans. Oh, a contested ball here, and it's going to be caught. And he'll be taken down inside Indy's 15-yard line. We keep waiting year after year to see signs of Tom Brady's arm strength deteriorating, but his message there, keep waiting. And that's how you start a drive, because you know they had this play in their back pocket, waiting for the right time to unleash it, and boy, did they pick the right opportunity, unleashed it big time, and that was also a big time throw. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he'll get nothing out of that one. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. 
don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle, and that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Evans has it left side. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Suckup's kick is good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, etc. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Rodgers on the return. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Time to see Jacob Eason and company go back to work. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure that his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game, but just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me. We'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. They'll run on first down. It's Taylor. Gets this up across the 20 to the 21 or 22. Did show some power on that run, breaking the tackle. Levante David in on the tackle. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Go, That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. 45, 45. Mike, 45. Now a give to Taylor. And this is going to be a Colts first down as the tackle made it about the 43-yard line. Yeah, like Ain't nothing wrong with that. Partner, in our years together, we've never really run into a player that's admitted a, a, a doubt or a lack of confidence, right? But right now, I'm just wondering about that interior line because on defense, they're starting to get manhandled at the point of attack. Do they have it in them to figure a way to reverse the tide? Because right now, they're running the ball at will. On first down, Taylor. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. 
What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself as we just saw there. On second down, it's Taylor, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage, and now third and 11 coming up. That's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working, but how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. The Colts on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 11. Throwing is Eason. Eason in trouble, and down he goes. Jason Pierre-Paul able to get him down for a loss of 11, and it brings up fourth down. And this Indianapolis offensive line is one of the best in the business. Also, one of the toughest. They only gave up 21 sacks in 2020, the second lowest total in the NFL. Surprisingly, they've already given up two in this game. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the second time. Forty yards on the punt, two on the return. And here we go again with Tom Brady in Tampa's offense. And he's looked pretty good. Does have the one interception, but two touchdown passes so far. Your analysis. They'll take the offset. When you talk about throwing two touchdown passes, no one wants to see an interception thrown. But those things happen in the course of a ball game and over the course of a season. But throwing two touchdown passes, that's why the team has an advantage. That's what they're looking for more of. He'll be hoping to make it a 3-1 to one ratio here in the second quarter. Brady now on first down. And that is incomplete here. I think the defenders have to feel pretty good, even though the ball was tipped in the air and could have become a big part for the offense. They actually won one because the guy flinging it today, he's having quite the performance. A couple of touchdown passes, almost threw his first interception, but he's throwing it so well that I think Lady Luck was on his side. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Brady now to throw. Going up top for Miller. It's caught inside the 25. And all the way down to the 22-yard line. But well, one thing's for sure, they're going to have to come up with something at halftime because he is absolutely roasting them right now. They're going to go through the whole litany of things, changing coverages, you know, what are we going to do to put a man on him? The big thing to me is treat it like a good pitcher treats pitching a game. Change your timing, change your location. So sometimes you're up on him, sometimes you're back. Just change up the looks that he sees and make him just a little bit more hesitant. They'll run on first down. Bernard. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid-type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. Second down at four. Throwing now is Brady. Open man, Gronkowski complete. And the Bucs are going to have a first and goal as the tackle made at the 10-yard line. Brady on target to Gronk. First down, Buccaneers. And there's a familiar sight. Rob Gronkowski making a catch for a first down. And remember, Gronk said he was done in 2019, was out of football after retiring from the Patriots. But Brady asked if he'd run it back with him in Tampa, and he answered the call. Gronk earned his fourth ring with the win in Super Bowl 55, a game in which he scored two. Looking for Brown, and he's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. 
Tom Brady, his third touchdown pass of this first half as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. Such an art to dot the I, just get the feet in right there against the line before going out of bounds. Such an incredibly graceful athletic play, but also a lot of practice goes into it. They work on that to make sure that they learn how to train their feet to get down in bounds. And I believe they buzz down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Suck up for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So that drive spanned five plays, and it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Now Jonathan Taylor and the Colts offense retakes center stage. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. And that nearly a turnover, but it's incomplete. Well, fortunate to retain possession there, and it's second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Mike's by four, Mike's by four. Throwing again on second and ten. Eason. A throw for Pittman is intercepted. Carlton Davis picks it. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. All day, baby. Let's get this. An unfortunate sequence there. Try to get points before intermission, but now the interception, and their opponents have a chance to possibly pad their lead. Yeah, they had an opportunity there, and they weren't able to capitalize on it. And that's something that could come back and haunt them later. They're begging their defense now to keep them from scoring before the half ends. Here's the Tampa Bay offense and Ronald Jones leading him out. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. And this is caught by Evans. Now the Bucks going to use on, the first man. of their Let's timeouts go. as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. On 
on first and ten. Here's Brady. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Another try after the first down sack. Brady over the middle complete. It's Jones. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. It's a gain of five on the play, and they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Here's Brady. And that is incomplete. Seven seconds remaining. They can't move the ball on us. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. And Suckup will put this one right through, and that will extend their lead even further. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. So with three seconds remaining in the half, they will line up to kick this one away. This taken in at the goal line. We got this. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Buccaneers out on top. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. It was a strong first half from who else? Tom Brady. First up, though, let's take a look at the next-gen stats from the first half for the Bucks. And our statisticians got through a couple of pencils already. This offense is on pace for potentially 500 yards in passing. That's pretty incredible. Meanwhile, for the Colts, we check on their numbers on the ground in the first half as they know they'll need to be better to overcome this halftime deficit. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Colts getting the football first, and they trail here as we are back underway in quarter number three. And here's Rodgers to return. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Now whistles, and we've got a man down. A man down here following the kickoff. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. come to the line ready to start their next drive and you have to think Charles down three scores already they need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance 
And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, win. efficient, Let's get the go. ball into the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you can just put the ball on it and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Back to throw. Eason. Caught left side by Hilton. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. A good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Now a handoff, Taylor with it. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right in midfield at the 50. 46 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 16 times. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. On the handoff, Taylor. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Looking to throw, Eason. And that is incomplete. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. That one sails out of bounds. A side judge will walk on, it off. Fellas. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. Again, we see Tom Brady and the Bucs set to take over. And a trio of touchdown passes so far. They've got the lead as well. All is good in their football world at this point. And it's so much fun for our colleagues, right? Think about our producer, our director, everyone putting together these shots. Wouldn't you love to be in the truck right now to hear him calling for it? Give me that one, give me that one, give me that one. And we just saw three beautiful touchdown passes. Now he's looking for four. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems he? like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. And he's going to be stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing there for him. Second down. If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try and make some plays in their backfield. To throw, it's Brady. And he's going to go down right near the goal line. The officials look at each other. They're going to mark him at the one-yard line. Ben Banagoon. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. And indeed, that's what they'll do as they run it here. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. 
Call it a gain of three, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, they did go run, so you were right. Maybe a little more breathing room for fourth down. Well, no one wants to be accused of playing it safe, right? But instead, they would just reverse it and say, we're playing it smart. Here's Bradley Pinion now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he'll just punch it out of there, and it's not a great kick. Oh, nice move. <laughs> a 39-yard punt, a return go, of five. And the Colts are set up well as they take over first and ten on the short side of the field. Well, the Colts now, they're ready to get the football back. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. On first down, Taylor. He won't find a ton of space following the display of power as he's down just inside the 45. Give the tackle that time to Jordan Whitehead. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass, but in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right, it might go to them in this game. I like that, MVU. Well done. And a nice run. They're going to take this close to the first down marker at the Bucks 37. 62 yards on the ground for him so far. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. Four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now three plays, all three short runs, but together a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. 45, 45. Mike, 45. Now Eason. Taken in by the tight end, Doyle. Three yards the gain there, second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Coming up on second and seven. They'll try the left side with Taylor. And a nice run. They're going to take this close to the first down marker at the Bucks 24. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Eason sets to throw it. He'll check this down to Hines. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. He loses four, and it brings up fourth. And not what you're looking to do on third and one, completing the pass, but going backward. I have zero explanation for that because third and one, you just figure snap, throw, first down, right? Easy play, but end up losing yardage on it. That's hard to account for. Blankenship's kick is good. And that will move the deficit from 20 down to 17. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you see a lot of guys sag and they can't make the next one. Not in this case, stepped right up like a pro.
The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. Oh, the return is Mickens. And taken down just past the 20 at about Let's the 21-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And Brady and the Buccaneers here, first and 10 at their own 21. Here's Brady to throw. Looking downfield for Gambling. And got his man complete. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. The fourth touchdown pass of the game for Tom Brady. And the Bucs are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And that time, he came out of the slot for that big play downfield for the score. I think what we just saw there, partner, was what we call scheming a guy open. Put him in the slot. Know that he has tremendous speed. What you're doing with your other receivers is likely running shorter routes to draw the attention closer to the line of scrimmage to give him a chance to get downfield and turn it into a one-on-one -on -one route, often against the safety. You like your odds when he's running against the safety. His speed usually wins, and it did on that play. Extra point put through by Suckup, and the lead is now 24. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. Bringing it out of his end zone, Isaiah Rodgers. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Go, Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. 79 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. They run once more with Taylor. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. And this is going to be a Colts first down as he's got this past the 35 to about the 37. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Eason to throw. And the catch made by Hilton. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. And right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Here's Eason off the play fake. 
And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time. But it's going to be second down. And where they are on the scoreboard almost dictates taking this big shot and trying to get right back into the game. They took it there and couldn't connect. Despite the defense being ready, go ahead and force it downfield. See what you can get. 45, 45. Mike, 45. This is Hines. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. And they do get this across midfield of the 49, but a small consolation prize as he's well short of the first. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. Well, the guys who are paid to make the tackles deserve some kudos there, but I think they deserve even bigger ones because in that situation, they had to be thinking pass. Loosened up defense, going to pass coverage. Instead, maybe they surprised him a little bit running the ball, yet they rallied to it and stopped him well short of a first down. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And this ball is going to be down now right at the 10-yard line. Good spot. Well, someone's going to be happy with that effort. You know who else is going to be happy? His defense. Absolutely. <laughs> He's created a very long field for that offense to try to traverse. And he got some help from Mr. Football there, checking up nicely. Good English on that punt. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 from back at their own 10-yard line. They'll start on the ground here with Bernard. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Ahead of the chains now, second and two. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. Looking for Evans, and it's intercepted. Xavier Rhodes with a pick, and he will bring it back. An interception return for a Colts TD. I think this is where you have to have the term situational football in your head because this game is pretty much in the palm of your hand and the one thing you can't afford to do, turn the ball over. Now you've given the patient a little bit of a heartbeat, haven't you? And now they're feeling it and they're back in this game. Yeah, still a little bit of a lead, but that makes things more interesting. We're still just in the third quarter here. The defense more than did its job. Now the offense is summoned onto the field as they'll go for two. Eason going to drop the throw for it. And they're going to get the two-point conversion. Caught in the end zone. And that cuts the lead a bit further. And there's a quick momentum swing. INT return for pick six. And then the two-point conversion goal. And even if you're keeping your wits about you, you're thinking to yourself, okay, extra point block team going into the game now. All of a sudden you're hearing defense. Everyone's scrambling for their helmets and throwing down their cups of water. That's a great position for them to be in trying to score against that team. A little bit disjointed. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Oh, the return is Mickens. 
And he will be taken down here on the return on what will Let's wind up being it. the final play of this third quarter. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Bucs. They've got the football. They also are in front here on the scoreboard as we start the fourth. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. And the pick six we just saw makes things a little more interesting. Still, though, a two-possession game as they control their destiny in this fourth quarter. Now a throw here, hauled in. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. They'll contain him to just four, second down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Brady going to fake the give to Jones and set up the throw. There's Evans again, complete. Brady to Evans that time, first down Tampa. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Now a first down carry by Jones. He's brought down there by Kenny Moore. Well, so far, this game has gone the way the defensive coordinator had hoped. They've dictated things. And they've not let them run the ball very well at all. They gave up a nice game there. I doubt it'll back off their confidence. They've played so well throughout this entire game. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They'll go again to Jones. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And that's the type of run that you'll live with. In this game, he's had a good number of carries. He's just been unable to really break off anything substantial. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. They'll run on first down. Jones, and that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Sometimes that's a danger, putting that jumbo set out there. You just get a lot of bodies massed in one location. You could wind up with 18, 20, maybe even all 22 in the box and there's nowhere to run the football. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. From midfield, here's Brady. Throw right side caught by O.J. Howard. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 28. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. First down catch there by O.J. Howard, well done. And he's got to be excited because he missed a lot of the fun last year after suffering a torn Achilles back in week four. But his head coach, Bruce Arian, says the sky's the limit for him in 2021 after rehabbing in the offseason. <laughs> Throwing on first down is Brady. Man open left side is Brown. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. The catch and run there, good for 16 and a first. And that's a good catch there for a first down by Antonio Brown. And in his career, at one point, he had six straight seasons over 100 catches. Not putting up those types of numbers now, but continues to be a favorite of Tom Brady, who recruited him originally to New England and most recently to Tampa. <laughs> From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Brady going to throw. He's got his big tight end, Gronkowski. 
Three yards the gain there, second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. It's second and seven from the nine. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One receiver right, that's Brown. Again, it's Brady. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Coverage is awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. They'll go with a big bank for it. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Leonard Fournette, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Bucs have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. So they took a chance there on fourth down, and boy, does it pay off. It pays off with six points. Yeah, I have to imagine that they were thinking maybe we can at least get a first down if we don't score. But he decided he didn't want a new set of downs. He just wanted a touchdown. Extra point try now for Sucka. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the man who finished it off with a run into the end zone, Leonard Fournette. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Rodgers on the return. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Eason and the Colts now with a first and 10 at their own 16. From the gun is Eason. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Eason. Out to the right and complete to Pittman. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Throwing is Eason. Over the middle here, it's Hilton. 
And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? It should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not cause, easy. Because when they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. He's not going to get me. They'll look to throw again. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see a breakdown as the passer, I think in this situation, you're either throwing it at the feet of your back to make sure no one picks it off, or you throw it away, throw it over the sideline. Don't try and freelance and try and make a bigger play. There's really no one else running a pattern that should be open. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Going for Hinton, and it's intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield, Jr. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for a Buccaneer TD. That's what I'm talking about, Well, baby. dare I say it, it's kind of quid pro quo. Both defenses now with an interception return for a touchdown. Your vocabulary, sir. Well done. Suck up for the extra point. And the lead is now an even 30. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And here's Rodgers to return. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. And the Colts coming out now. And you can sort of sense their dejection. That last pick six put the icing on the cake, so to speak, in what has been a rough go for them. Eason and the Colts now with a first and 10 at their own 16. Throwing after the interception, Eason. Looking left sideline, incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Second and 10. to throw again. Eason. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. 
At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. 45, 45. Operating from the gun, Eason. He'll check this one down to Taylor. And he's going to get this to about the 20, but that is well short of what he needed. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. What hallmark of good defenses? It's understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And now possession's going to go over with a football at the 20-yard line. The Bucks ready to take over once again. Been a very strong performance for them, really, on both sides of the football. The turnover on down is the most recent example, and now, obviously, they're in a great spot here. Yeah, if you're over on the bench right now, you're shaking hands with your teammate, you're hugging him, give him a little dap. Been a big, big performance for them. Now you just don't get careless. Take care of the ball on the way out. On first down, Brady. And that's incomplete. And the incompletion there stops the clock. Any surprise they're throwing here late? Ordinarily, yes, because you would think enough is enough. They've got plenty of lead, but I've seen this a bunch of times as well. The defense is going to crowd the line of scrimmage. If you just hand it off inside, you're getting your running back popped a lot as well. Sometimes the defense dictates it. If they're going to crowd it, you may have no other choice but to throw it downfield. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. A give to Jones. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Bucks on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and nine. To throw is Brady. And it's caught. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Tom Brady hooking up with Mike Evans there. And this Buccaneer offense is running away with this one. And you wonder now if he might be able to remove the helmet, put on the baseball cap, and watch the rest of this one from the sideline. His fifth touchdown pass of the game. Say that again. Did you say fifth touchdown pass of the game? Yes, sir. But that's a heck of a performance, isn't it? Because they've had no answer for him at all, all game long. Receivers have been open constantly, and he hasn't missed a single one of them. Extra point up and good by Sucka, and that will extend this big lead. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. Bringing it out of his end zone, Isaiah Rodgers. And not a good return here at all as they'll be forced to start at the 12-yard line. Time to see Jacob Eason and company go back to work. And right now, probably just one thing in his mind, it's getting back to the hot start because he's really faded. And ordinarily when that happens, the quarterback, as you know, is usually the leader of the squad. Now there's probably a, a silent camaraderie that comes about him saying, hey, guess what? We got you. Don't worry about it. Let's go, big fella, because they know more times than not, he tends to pick things up, and they tend to play well. On first down, Jacob Eason. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. 
Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. Credit the sack to Vita Vea. We call that a sack. Come on now. Let's do this. That right now, that's a defeated team out there. I think you can see it totally in their body language. Hands on hips, heads low. Uh, it's just been a struggle from the start. Yeah, this team has been thoroughly beaten right from the word go. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Taylor. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. Well, they got off the field on third down. An excellent job, an excellent defensive series. We always talk about adjustments and usually only at halftime. But the best teams adjust series to series. And on that series, they adjusted so well that they got the job done in fine style. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Back now comes Tampa Bay. We've got a lopsided game here. I don't know, Charles, what does the handbook say that we, we discuss when we've got a game like this in the fourth quarter? Hold on a second, let me, let me thumb to the proper page on that. Know what it says? What? Let's discuss how we got here. This is a dominant performance, where they took control of this game, how they've managed to keep control of this game, and then we go ahead and think about how we're going to leave here and get to the airport. In a lopsided blowout, the roads are usually open. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Darius Leonard, the all-pro, in on the tackle. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. On second down, it's Jones. Room here to run. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 55 rushing yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. They just look like they're having fun out there. Big lead. There's another big play on the big run. I mean, they can't be stopped. I'm a little bit older than you, as you well know, partner, and you tend to tell me that all the time. But uh, there used to be a big time song, and the lyric was, summertime and the living is easy. Right now, it's football time, and the running is easy for this crew. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Here's Jones. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. DeForest Buckner, all-pro defensive tackle there on the stop. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Here's second and nine. Brady gives this one off to Jones. And they'll get him down right about the 20. A gain of two easy there work. on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but what he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. A 
Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone.